Candidate with Nikki Haley throwing her hat in the ring as the second GOP candidate. What are her chances for 2024? I want to bring in our panel tonight, NBC News political analyst and CEO of Voto Latino, Maria Teresa Kumar, and NBC News political analyst Brendan Buck. He was a counselor to House Speaker Paul Ryan. Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Maria Teresa, I want to start with you. If you were to give that campaign announcement ad a grade, like a report card, A to F, what would you give it? Well, if I had never known who she was, I would actually say that's probably a B and would pique my interest. But if you actually see what her record was while she was go then governor, then you would actually be able to recognize that she speaks on both sides of her mouth. I was speaking principally as a woman who was, she was dis desperately against a any type of abortion and was perpetuating abortion bans. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest dings that she has going into the race. When you look at Trump, he doesn't say necessarily that he's anti-choice and that, uh, you know, in some screwy way when we saw what happened in Kansas may actually benefit him. You know, Brennan, I, I found the ad kind of interesting for a Republican primary. At times, if you close your eyes and just listen, you may have thought it was an ad for a Democratic primary. I say that because she talked a lot about race. And in 2016, we'll remember former President Trump launched his campaign with racially charged language against Mexico and talking about building a wall. Yeah, uh, it also felt a bit like a general election ad. Uh, it had a lot of vibes of maybe Mitt Romney in, 2020, in 2012. Uh, the problem is I'm just not sure that's what the Republican Party is looking for. I, I think Nikki Haley would be a, a tremendous general election nominee. I, I, I think she would be a great fresh face for the party. Um, the question is whether there's an audience for that. And, and polls show that she doesn't really resonate a whole lot. So she has a lot of work uh, ahead of her. Look, she may be right now in, in fourth place in her own home state. And I know uh, getting in early has has some of its advantages, but we are a much more populist party than we used to be. We're much more isolationist than we used to be. Um, the b most interesting thing from that ad for me, though, is she said she's going to kick back against bullies and whether or not she's going to be able to just say time for a new uh, new generation. That's nice, but it's probably not enough. You probably also need to take on Donald Trump. Nobody's really been willing to do that, but maybe she's signaling she will. And to be clear here, there there is no known Nikki Haley base within the GOP right now. That's exactly right. And I think yeah, that is right. one of the things you, that Buck is... You look, you, yeah, go, go, Brendan, you go yeah, ahead and then we're going to ask like, you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you look at polls and, and she's she barely registers. She's at at one percent. I think it is a mistake to say somebody who is not the leader uh, in an odd year is necessarily out of it in an even year. We, we've attached ourselves to people like Scott Walker and Rudy Giuliani and, and been proven wrong. But um, long, long road, big hill to climb for her. Yeah. You know, Maria Teresa, I want to ask you about the point that Brendan was making earlier about the state of South Carolina. He's right. If Senator Tim Scott, who is incredibly popular with the GOP, throws his hat in the ring as well, they're going to be competing for, for the hometown vote in their state of South Carolina, which is always an important state in the primary calendar. Going to be more important on, with, with your party this year, clearly, but still an important state for Republicans. So this even hurts her, I mean, if, if Tim Scott does come in. Well, I think it's more of what Brendan said in the beginning, is that she doesn't really have a base within the Republican Party, and that's going to be her biggest challenge. What I found curious was the fact that Trump actually said, you know, kind of shrugged his shoulders, he said, let her get in the ring. And that's because he does recognize that the more candidates that come into the ring, he ha he does have a loyal base that will come out for him. And having Nikki Haley come in the only person right now that gets hurt is DeSantis. DeSantis is actually going, they're going to be touting after the exact same kind of moderate independent Republicans. And I think that is why Trump says, you know, the water's warm, come on and come on in. It's a great point. I want to, that leads to my next question with Brendan. Now, Brendan, how many people, as somebody who, who, who has ties to the Republican Party, how many people would it start to make you feel nervous that Trump could actually take it all with his MAGA support? How many people would have to throw their, their names in, like four, five? Yeah, not a whole lot. Four or five. Look, I, I, Donald Trump has anywhere from 30 to it's not it's not a majority, but anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of the party who will choose him. You first. think he, you think and he could still have, have up to 40 yeah. percent, Brendan? You think he could possibly in some in some states up to 40 percent still? 
Absolutely. As I look at it, it's kind of cliche to talk about lanes, but you've got Donald Trump, who's himself. You've got never Trumpers, who are, I think, are pretty small. Then you've got people who I think are sort of Trumpist, but maybe more electable. And I would put maybe a Ron DeSantis in, in that category, maybe a Ted Cruz if he were to run. But then you've got a lot of other people uh, in the category where I think they're trying to be more traditional Republicans. And that's a very crowded field for, I think, a pretty small portion of the vote. And that's that's Nikki Haley. That, maybe that's Mike Pence. That's Tim Scott. That's Glenn Youngkin. Lots of people who want to be, be, you know, what they used to be 10 years ago and, and see if that still sells. You're splintering the, the, the vote really quickly. And if Donald Trump's 30 percent, even if it's just that, is very loyal, that's plenty to win a plurality in a lot of these states where you win the delegates if you just have a plurality. Yeah. Maria Teresa, before we go, I do want to ask you about the, the, the big news on the Democratic side. Senator Feinstein is not going to run for reelection. She announced this. Who, who do you think is lined up for that seat there in California for that Senate seat? And could we possibly see a senator shift in the future? Well, I mean, you could have, you, you know, Katie Porter basically has put it in her hat. She has roughly $8 million. Schiff has almost $30 million. And Speaker, former Speaker Pelosi has already said that she is endorsing Schiff. One of the places that we're looking for, though, is whether or not Barbara Lee puts her hat in the ring. She has $60,000. This is going to be an incredibly expensive race for an incredibly blue state of, that is basically all Democrats and all are very formidable. But I do think that Adam Schiff is going to be the one that is going to lead the race for the establishment while Katie Porter is going to lead the race for the independent small dollar donor. It's going to be a battle. It'll Absolutely. definitely be a battle. It'll be a good race to watch as well. I want to thank mm -hmm. both of you for joining Top Story tonight. Uh, we will definitely check back in with you later in the campaign season.